G'day. My name's Darrell Webb. Today we're going to have a look at the All Powers. It is an S300 Plus. This is a small power station. Um, it's got a 300 or 299 watt hour uh, internal lithium battery. Uh, it's got a 300 watt inverter built in it. It's got some USB A's, some USB C, some wireless charging, a light cigarette light outlet, solar input. Um, we're going to check it all out anyway. Uh, they've also sent me out their SF100 um, flexible solar panel, which I'm really, really keen to test to see how it puts it out, because I've been using the SF200 now for probably nearly 12 months, and it's fantastic on top of the car. So uh, we'll come in close and see what you get and um, see what it's all about, see if it's worth uh, something you consider buying. All right. Uh, when you get this, it comes uh, packaged in this nice little box. Very, very well, nice and safe. It's just a very plain box. It does have some of the basic specs on there. I'll see if I can focus that on there for you. Uh, but it's a S300 Plus. It's the S300 Plus version 2.0. Uh, battery comes lithium ion. Capacity is 288 watt hours. It weighs 3.4 kilograms. Um, there's some dimensions there. AC put input. Uh, we're at the 240 volt. We can do 200 volt, 200 watts max at 50 hertz. Um, that's the AC input. Solar input, it can do 12 to 60 volts, 8.5 amps, 100 watt max. Uh, car charging input, 12 volt and 24 volt. Outputs, it's got AC. We're at the 240 volt one, so 220 to 240 volt, 300 watts max, so it's 600 watts. It's got a USB-A output up to 36 watts. It's got a USB-C output up to 100 watts. Uh, it's got a car port. Um, they can do 12 volt, 10 amps, which is 120 watt max. And the wireless charger is, has one on top, and it does 5 watt max. Um, <clears throat> so, pretty much, you've got a wireless charger on top. AC output here. You've got two USB-A's here and a USB-C, so a power delivery one, because it can do 100 watts on there. You've got a power button, you've got an AC button, a DC button, and a Bluetooth button. Um, and then on the back, there is a light and there is a handle. Um, AC charging input there, and solar input there, and a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket out. Okay, let's fire him up and run him on some stuff, eh? Um, just on there, you can see, I hope you can see this screen, but it's a, the light's not great. So it's pretty much a turn it on, you hold that button in, then you can go from there, you can turn AC on, and you can see the little AC icon there. And then you can also turn DC on, and it gives you, your, it livens up your um, wireless charging and um, your USB ports and your cigarette lighter socket, and the AC one livens up that. Um, Let's run some stuff of it and see what you can um, think. Um, just because when you look at all this, we'll actually run it because it only it sort of shows time remaining, shows um, the percent of battery, and you can see wattage out and um, and wattage in, obviously too, when it's charging. So we'll just see what this does when we actually use it. So this little guy's turned on. Everything's sort of on. The AC's on. The DC's on. Uh, let's try a little AC device. We'll try a. Um, um, a UHF radio charger because this is the type of thing I actually use it for um, so I'll just plug him in there and then I'll grab I think this thing's pretty full but we'll see what it draws anyway alright so it's charging it might not take much power because I think the battery on that's nearly full yeah it's not even registering alright but as you can see this is a typical type of thing you would want to charge and it, uh, it's doing it and um, I did actually charge two of these radios off it and I think it only took about 8% off the battery so um, I couldn't go wrong with that so uh, let's try something that uh, needs a bit of power um, I'll find my phone here and I've got a couple of different leads ok so I've got a USB-C to USB-C lead Let's see what that charges at and what it draws. See if it gives me super fast charging on my phone. Okay, my phone's saying super fast charging, 34 minutes and two full. And it's giving off oh, it's slow creep up, up to 18 watts, 17, 18. Alright, my phone's only taking about 18 watts, but I think that's about all my phone draws. I should have bought a drone out or something that, that draws some more power. Um, Alright, that's that one anyway, that drew 18 watts. Uh, we'll do more like a traditional. 
USB A to USB C. And see what they take. I think they charge. I think my phone on that takes fast charging at about 14 or 15 watts. Now the phone's saying fast charging, and it is drawing six watts. Oh. Where's my battery? Sent? 79. Maybe my battery. Maybe my phone's not even that hungry. It is very hot today too, so maybe they're being a little bit uh, cautious. All right, anyway, it charges your phone just fine. It does normal fast charging on the phone, and it does super fast charging by the power delivery, so you get uh, very, very fast with chargers. I don't have wireless charging in this to put on there, but I have put some friends' phones on there and my wife's phone, and the wireless charging runs just fine. Um, also on there, there is a light, which is actually at night time quite bright. It's got low, high, and then it's got SOS. So again, off. Low, high, SOS. Um, don't be deceived because we're using the daylight, but uh, it actually is quite bright. All right, uh, I will. I'm going to plug it in to 240. I have um, a lithium battery set up and an inver pure solar -like inverter in my car, so we'll just see what type of uh, power it actually draws while it's on and charging from my car. So we heard some fans kick on. It is charging at 201, 203, 203 watts. 200, 203. All right, as I said, this thing, pretty much if it's flat, within an hour and a half to two hours, it's fully charged. It's probably about 95% in realistically, if it's not 100% flat, put it on for an hour and she's charged. Um, or at least at about 95%. Uh, charging is super fast on this. And, um, and now we'll test the solar panel. We'll see how the solar panel goes with it. All right, excuse the sun, I know it's in a terrible spot this afternoon. Um, this is the SF100. Um, so when you order one of these power stations, if you order it with a solar panel, you will get a lead that comes that collects in the solar panel uh, and plugs straight into your device with an XT, XT60 connector. Um, also, optionally, you can also get a 12 volt one, um, which has got a cigarette lighter socket to XT60. It will charge up your car like that as well. Um, all right, the packaging on these panels is normally pretty good, so I thought I'd leave this one in there and we can open it up together. I did rip it open just to get the uh, charger out. But as you can see, Big, thick packaging and fully packaged even on the back of the panel. So you never have to worry about these. They don't have to be really beaten up to hurt them. Now what can I tell you about these panels? Okay, so if we just look over it, it's an ETFE coating and it's dimpled, a bit like a golf ball. I know you can't see it. I'll put some pictures over it so you can. Um, it has little tie-out points all the way along it. Um, but I've, um, I've put the SF200 straight in my car and bonded it down with um, high speed bonding tape and some um, core flue. Okay, so let's go over it. Specs, cell, cell materials, a monocrystalline silicon plus ETFE. Maximum out part is 100 watts. Open circuit voltage is 30.6 volt. Short circuit current is 4.5 amps. Maximum output voltage is 25.5 volt. Maximum output current 4.17 amp. Maximum system voltage 120 volt. Uh, its maximum conversion rate is 22 to 25% and it's water resistant IP68. Um, it weighs 2.4 kilos. When you think that's a 100 watt panel, um, and when you look over these things, they just feel premium. They look premium. They feel premium. And I've got to say, their performance is pretty premium. Anyway, let's hook this up to the power station and um, we'll see what this one actually gets out on this very, very hot day, high 30 degrees, and it's very late afternoon. Um, we'll see how it goes. These panels have that, that really good ETF air coating with its, uh, it's dimpled. It's, uh, it's rem it reminds me of like a golf ball. Um, it, it's fantastic, fantastic finish. The dirt seems to not hang onto it very well. Um, and, um, and even with a very, very shallow angle to the sun, where the sun's almost flat to it, um, it still manages to capture some light and produce some energy, which is uh, 
really, really impressive. And uh, as I said, I've got the SF200 on my roof of my Pajero, and um, we've been using that now. I think it's probably close to a year, or maybe even a bit over a year, and it's been um, super good. And um, there's no signs of um, any frosting or delaminating, which is really, really common for um, flexible solar panels. Um, this one's showing no signs of it. So, and it's been in a brutal like we get. It's been mid 40s multiple times, and that car's out in the sun 24/7. It's not under a carport or anything, so. Um, it's doing really, really good. All right, so we'll plug this little guy in. This panel's just sitting here at the moment. It's not in exactly a good spot. The sun's pointing well off the side. It's got shadows on it. We'll just see. So this is like if the sun was nearly flat to the panel. Most panels would put out nothing when it's like this, but um, these are SF series panels from all powers. With that dimple coating it really, really surprised me. I'll we'll just see if it puts actually anything in once like that. Oh yeah, it's actually going 12, 13, 14. Alright, so it's up around 12, 13, 14 watts with it, the sun on nearly a flat to the surface panel. So let's uh, put it around where it's actually in full sun. And get the angle about right. And I'm up to 76, 77, 79. And this is hot weather too, this panel's already warm. 79. So that's what it seems to be happy at now. The, the trees are only just barely... The sun's only just barely over top of the tree, so we'll probably already get and it's very low sun and um, and it's super hot, so not great conditions for the um, solar and it's giving it 79 watts. This performs very similar to the SF200, so um, yeah, I have to find something to use this for. It's a 100 watts is a uh, is great handy little thing and you know, 79 watts even in this uh, slightly Slightly shaded, but uh, very, very low Sunday um, with a, um, a very high humidity, uh, very high temperature. So, yeah, um, this panel is stinking hot. So, it's doing great. Uh, pros and cons. <clears throat> what have I enjoyed about this, and what haven't I enjoyed about it? Um, I'll start off with cons, and. <clears throat> The only thing I sort of found that that, that was it's not even irritating. Um, it's if I've been using it as like charging my phone, uh, by the time it's getting down to about 20 or 30 percent, um, like I've charged, been charging my phone like pretty much for nearly two weeks. By the time it's down there, I just find it's actually lower than what it is. It'll stop on you when you're down down around 20 percent. Um, it's just I think it's just the gauge is not as accurate as as when you're using it sort of faster. I found when I've been running it um, off the AC or um, charging multiple things at once, if I flatten it right out, the gauge seems to stay accurate. But when I've been charging just like my phone off it, after a couple of weeks, the, the gauge isn't that accurate anymore. Like I said, it still had 30% of power, and then it, it really probably only had 10% left. Um, that was about the only con that I could sort of find in that, um, that was worth mentioning. Um, maybe the other thing is the handle. I'm not sure why, but the handle locks down really hard. Um, pros, um, the wireless charger on top, it's not real selective on where you have your phone. If you stick your phone on it, even roughly right, it will start charging your phone. Um, it's pretty quiet in its operation, that's another big pro too. A lot of them, things when you charge, some of them are quite loud fans. Um, this guy, there's fans, but it's very quiet. Um, the other thing I found um, is it charges really quickly off AC. Um, and it's quite happy to take in um, a good power off the uh, solar as well. So when I had it to my other little power, uh, my other little solar panels, um, it charged quite fast off solar as well as off um, AC. So it's always a bonus if you were all of a sudden home from work and you're like, oh gee, I forgot to charge that last night. In just an hour, hour and a half, you can sort of go from, you know, from being really dead flat to full. So um, fast charging, that's always a big bonus. Um, I guess that leads me into the conclusion. Um, who do I think this is for? Well, I know what I've been using it for, um, and this will probably explain it for a lot of you guys. This is not going to run, you know, your induction cookers and kettles and things like that. This isn't made for that. What I have found it handy for is charging it off things like um, when I want to charge something that needs AC, but it's only small. Some of my camera batteries, some of my drone stuff actually have an AC lead on them, um, so I can't sort of charge them off 240 volt. Um, my UHF radios in particular do it, for instance. Um, my 5 watt radios, they need an AC output. So I can plug my, you know, 
charging station in for my UHF radios and chuck it in and it will charge them up fine just quick just like you are at home as long as you stay under 300 watts um, it's really handy to have so besides that it's just a really good power bank if you're charging your phone I said I even use it at home I had it sitting down beside my couch because I didn't have no USBs there being slack watching TV and I think I've got like two weeks out of charging my phone every night so um, that's the type of thing I'm going to use it for and a spot Plus, as an advantage, if you're away, you can keep your phone batteries charged, uh, your camera batteries, um, UHF radios, drones, anything that needs AC power to charge, this will charge it. And um, and you can also keep it topped up with solar, just because it's got a great little solar input in there. Anyway, that's it. Um, I definitely like that, and I was really, really happy with it. Um, for the solar panel, um, I've been using the SF200 for... I said probably nearly 12 months now. You can go back and watch a full review I did on the SF100, uh, on the SF200, um, and it sort of shows, because this SF100 is essentially the same panel, just more compact. I love that it gives um, uh, nearly all the power that it states, even in hot weather, and, um, and I love the fact with that dimple coating, the ETFE dimple coating, um, it catches light even when it's at a very shallow angle. So those um, SF series panels from All Powers are definitely worth um, checking out because they're pretty reasonably priced. They're not like the cheapest panels around, but they're, for what they are, they're reasonably priced. And um, their performance is really good. And so far with the SF200, longevity has been really, really good. Like it's showing no signs of delamination or anything playing up. So um, I'd be really, really happy to, uh, if I needed some flexible solar panels for a job on top of a caravan or something like that, I'd be having a really good look at the SF100 or the SF200 solar panels. Um, I rate them quite highly. Anyway, um, on that note, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button and if you want to check out the all powers any of their products um i'll if i've got a link i'll put it in the description or maybe even here on the screen and i'll put some links in uh, the description to where you can check these products out because i actually really like the all power stuff and i think you guys will too anyway on that note bye for now